cross bonds. Let's turn that off. Last time I forgot to turn the audio off on the monitor and you could hear in the background and it was super annoying. Hey guys, it is Victoria. Welcome back to Femhead. And today I want to talk about what the first month of motherhood was really like for me. This is my experience. Every person is different. Every baby is different. I just wanted to share my experience. The first two, maybe three weeks were hard. It is such a huge huge adjustment to add a baby to your life and not only to add them to your life but to also be healing from birth you have this like tiny thing that is completely dependent on you like it needs you it cannot do anything for itself and you are sleep deprived you are healing it's a whole thing so i just kind of wanted to break it down so essentially like the first week they just sleep or at least he slept like he just slept all the time he'd wake up to eat and go back to sleep and it was glorious he probably ate every two or three hours i don't think i ever really had to wake him up to eat he would always wake up between that two and three hour mark but i would always wake him up if he somehow did make it to that three hour mark just to make sure that he was getting in his calories and his milk the first week they just sleep and eat and poop and you're just kind of keeping your head above water and so even though for him just slept all the time he still woke up that many times throughout the night to eat and there's so many different feelings going on because you've lost your freedom in a sense no longer can you just like flit off and do whatever you want you have to take into account this little tiny human and so i definitely struggled with just like my body hurt nether region was healing and just really sore to like sit down there was a time in which i ran out of ibuprofen or oh my gosh i was so sore and it hurt and i remember crying multiple times just because i was just like my vagina hurts so bad it's a little rough but it gets better. So the second week, I would say they start waking up just a tiny bit and then that kind of like freaks you out because you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You just slept before. What are you doing staying awake? Is this okay? Are you awake too much? And I didn't know anything about awake windows, like how long they should be awake, when to put them to sleep. Oh my God, here it goes. What do I do? For him, and I think most babies, learning how to poop and pass gas is difficult. It's hard for the little bodies to figure out that their digestive systems and everything are still developing and still growing and maturing and everything. So they don't know which muscles to clench and relax to do these, you know, bodily functions and it upsets them because they are uncomfortable. We've all been constipated, I'm sure. Imagine having that sensation and not knowing what to do or why it's happening to you and just like knowing you're uncomfortable. His favorite pooping position and like farting position is after I feed him, I will. Some reflux is normal with all babies. And I think most parents think that their baby has like a reflux issue. I know I thought he did and he might have had it, but it might've just been like normal newborn reflux. So what I learned is their digestive system just isn't completely developed. And the sphincter between the stomach and the esophagus doesn't always close back down like it's a little flap i think don't quote me but some some sort of like little opening and sometimes it doesn't close back up so then the milk and like bile and stomach acid can come back up into their esophagus and that just sounds unpleasant so no wonder they get pissed off and sometimes it looks like they puke up their entire meal because of this or just because they're babies and they puke up like he's such a spitty pukey baby but he's not upset about it anymore like after i feed him i have to hold him upright or at least at an angle where his head is above his body you know for at least 10 minutes if not 20 minutes when it was really bad i would hold him upright for 20 minutes and now i can kind of hold him at an angle for 10 minutes but there's times where you would feed him and he would like pop off and immediately like arches back and start screaming because he was so uncomfortable. Talk to their pediatrician. So after two weeks, they see pacifiers and bottles are okay to introduce for breastfed babies. Um, I hear people like, they just give their babies pacifiers right away and it's fine. It's everyone's personal preference. I wasn't super like, I'm not gonna give my baby a pacifier, but I was just like, I'm gonna wait two weeks. He's just finally like getting a pacifier down. Like he can almost keep it into in his mouth by himself. But for weeks and weeks and weeks, only recently did he become interested in pacifiers. Before he was like, what is this? 
I don't want this get this out of my mouth and he would like fuss about it I recommend like at that two-week mark even if you're not going back to work for a while whatever like start sooner rather than later introducing a bottle because what I came to realize was he had no interest in a bottle I would gotten two of the Tomo bottles because they said that was best for breastfed babies because it you know mimicked the shape and all that and he just was not having it he would scream and scream and scream and fuss and not eat and then one day I was like you know what I don't have any other bottles wait I do I have the bottles that came with my spectra pump and I will put examples of the Komotomo and the spectra up here so you can see the difference so the Komotomo has a much rounder nipple and the spectra one is much more narrow and so I always thought that like the Komotomo bottle would be better than the spectra because it was more like the shape of a boob than the other one but lo and behold I was like you know what let's try it let's put some milk in a spectra bottle and see if he eats it without even an issue and now my baby eats from a bottle like a dream because he can eat from the spectra bottle if you ever want to be away from your baby for more than like two or three hours or not even like be away from them but like if you're going to be gone from them during like a feeding it causes so much anxiety when you're like i don't know if my baby is going to take a bottle or not so it makes me feel so much better knowing that like okay i can leave him with someone and he will be able to eat and not starve to death i'd also say like don't wait until you need it to happen to introduce a bottle and don't try to do it when you're like out and about just do it when you're like casually at home like okay buddy like let's try a couple ounces or like an ounce of milk and see how it goes he's not going back down let's i gotta go put him back to sleep theo is fed played with and put down for another nap so i can continue filming usually they eat around every two to three hours or that's what they tell you to feed them every two to three hours but sometimes they want to eat more than that if you've never heard of cluster feeding it's definitely a thing i discovered it after there was one night where he cluster fed through the night and i was like oh my god what is this why is he waking up every hour an hour and a half I looked it up and i was like oh okay he's going through a growth spurt let's do this in the afternoon and evening instead of in the middle of the night the next couple of days i would just if he acted like he wanted to eat that afternoon every hour every hour and a half i just fed him because i wanted him to fill his little belly up rather than trying to do it at night you're going to hear so many different opinions and thoughts behind don't wake a sleeping baby wake up a sleeping baby and it's all just personal preference of what works best for you and your baby but I would wake him up at least every three hours. If he was still sleeping at two hours, two and a half hours, 2.45, like I'd let him continue sleeping, but I'd wake him up at the three hour mark to feed him in that first month. And now during the day, I will wake him up if he makes it to three hours and feed him. As I think many new parents are, I was so nervous about nights. So the two nights, well, like two and a half nights we were in the hospital, we sent Theo to the nursery. I'd keep him until like like 11 p.m. feeding or whatever it was at that time. And then I'd call him up and be like, yo, he's ready for you. And they'd take him to the nursery, take care of him, bring him to when he eat it, needed to eat, and it was glorious. So I got home and I was like terrified of doing it on my own. I remember leaving the hospital and being like, how do I remember to wake him up? And how do I set an alarm on my phone? And so like, I don't know, the first week maybe, I set alarms on my phone every time. I would go to bed and I'd be like, okay, three hours from when he ate, is this time and I'd set an alarm and then he would wake up before that alarm I'd be like okay three hours from when he ate is this time and I'd set an alarm and I did that throughout the night I think maybe once he made it to that three hour alarm but he always woke up in between that two hour and three hour mark if not before to eat he's a hungry baby he's going to wake me up when he wants to eat and he always has and then after a certain point all sorts of different recommendations usually it's like when they're back to their birth weight you can start just letting them sleep at night and i know just like they're not going to just automatically sleep through the night sort of thing but you don't have to wake them up every two to three hours throughout the night. I started at that time at like a 7 p.m. bedtime, like in a bedtime routine and all that. So we would do that around 7 p.m. and then I'd go back and feed him around 10 p.m. From 10 p.m. on, I just let him sleep and I'd let him wake me up when he woke up instead of me waking him up. For a long time, that was, I'd maybe get three hours, maybe four, but then as he's gotten older, he's been able to go longer and longer stretches from that 10 p.m. feeding and I think to date, the longest I've gotten is eight hours and 20 minutes between feedings, and I know that exactly, and like that is insane to me. By week four, I was down to him waking up twice a night. He'd wake up around 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., and then again around like 7 a.m. And my biggest piece of advice when they're sleeping, do not pounce on them when they stir, when they grunt, when they let out a little cry. Like humans are noisy sleepers, especially babies are such noisy sleepers. Next time you go to bed, 
just take a moment to like notice how much you kind of like move around shift around to find a comfortable position you might stretch out you make a lot of noises too so imagine if someone like jumped on you every time you like moved how would you ever fall asleep my biggest piece of advice is just pause step back give them a moment see if they're just shifting around getting comfortable just grunting oftentimes they're not actually awake but if you jump on them you're gonna wake them up baby sleep cycles are like 45 minutes 60 minutes depending on like their age and the baby and all that sort of stuff we all go through sleep cycles and as adults we're able to put ourselves back to sleep without even recognizing that we're actually awake turn onto our side or roll over onto our stomach move our pillow around and go back to sleep the first couple weeks during the day when he napped i would have him down here on the couch with me and i just lay him on the couch next to me and so i would be able to see and like watch him go through his sleep cycle and watch him like connect them I suppose and he just moved around and grunted and just like squirmed so much and he would even like cry out but he was completely asleep he wasn't totally awake and he would always just kind of like drift back into sleep and I think that was really good to just watch and see like okay like he's okay I don't need to like help him but there definitely is a time where I'm like okay yeah he's awake and he's not gonna put himself back to sleep I need to go help them and that's fine it's not gonna work every single time having an app is great because when you're a new mom your like brain is in a million different places and you don't have the best memory anymore and so I got glow baby and just like trying to find an app before we left the hospital to track his feedings and his diapers and all that stuff and that's the one I settled on when you first have them and you don't quite know their different like signs and cries and like you haven't quite figured it out I could look at the app and say like Oh, it's been two hours since he ate. That's why he's crying, he's hungry. Or, oh, I haven't changed his diaper yet. Like, that's why he's crying. One thing I learned that changed everything was most babies fight a swaddle. And you will hear so many parents say, my baby doesn't like to be swaddled. My baby likes his hands by his face. I can't swaddle my baby. And I was that person. I said, Theo does not like to be swaddled. He fights it, he screams, he struggles, he like, wrestles around until he gets his arms free you know i try to swaddle his arms out i try to swaddle one out one in them by his face them completely in and like nothing worked and he was just pissed about all of it there was a point where i was like at my was i was like trying sleep sack i borrowed different swaddles from a friend she let me borrow her swaddle me the ones where they're like a little starfish it came to a head in kansas city <laughs> i have been looking at taking care of babies for a while sorry i have hair and it's just you know when your hairs you can feel the hairs on your skin it just like ugh. one of you guys recommended taking care of babies on instagram and i was like chill yeah i'll follow her and i would like watch all of her stories all of her safe stories all of her posts like i really really liked her i knew she had a newborn class and it was it's like 75 dollars i want to say and i was like oh that's a lot of money is it worth it like should i spend that could i spend it on something else <sighs> it was such well well money spent it's such a good way to spend money money well spent there we go it was money well spent yeah taking care of babies will i ever sleep again newborn course it's for babies zero to 12 weeks old and it was revolutionary because i was just like struggling with like he didn't want to be swaddled i couldn't figure it out night times are just difficult because he would just keep waking himself up i got to a point to where i was like holding him on my chest to sleep because that was like how he would stay asleep and i was just so frazzled and there was three weekends in a row we did a night over in a hotel in iowa city kansas city and the iowa city again when we were in kansas city i got so much anxiety because I was trying to get him to bed. I was alone because Michael was a soccer game and he was screaming bloody murder. I was in a hotel and I was like, oh my God, so I'm gonna piss people off. Someone's gonna come bang on my door and yell at me for having a baby here and I can't get him to calm down. And like, I got to the point where like, I loaded him up in a stroller and I was just walking up and down the block outside our hotel, like crying because he was just screaming and I had so much anxiety about like, being in a hotel with a screaming baby. It was not good. That night, I slept with him on my chest, which I know you're not supposed to do, but pff, you do you, do what you have to do to get your baby to sleep. But I bought the newborn class right then and there like that night. I was like, screw it, I'm spending this $75 and I'm getting this class. And it, like within days, started taking it and started implementing the things. It was like, oh my God, like a light bulb went off. It was like, this is how I can swaddle my baby. And like still to this day, when you put him in a swaddle, he throws a fit, like he does not like being put in a swaddle. But if his arms are out, he wakes himself up. Like he does these like 
drummer boy arms now he'll just sit with his arms like this but he'll just like move them all around get them all in his face and then he'll wake himself up but if you little straight jack at him he will sleep and sleep and sleep and it is glorious that is a reason i have been able to get him to sleep longer stretches a night she also start talks about wake windows which is something i hadn't even thought of yet because when they're itty bitty newborns they just sleep all the time and then all of a sudden they're like awake and you like don't know like how long should they be awake and then an overtired baby is so much harder to put to sleep than a baby that that is like almost ready to go to sleep. Not sponsored, I just really like Kara and her team and taking care of babies. I wouldn't be able to start getting back into work as soon as I have been, like answering emails and filming videos and editing videos if I was exhausted during the day. Cause if I wasn't sleeping at night, I would be sleeping right now when he was taking a nap. They're only this little for so long. So like you can't spoil a newborn cuddle your newborn, love them, snuggle them, hold them through a nap if you want to. I would say like one nap a day, I'd probably hold him just because he's just fighting that nap or it's not going well and I just really want him to nap. But most of the time he naps on his own and he sleeps on his own at night in his bassinet and it like, oh. That I was supposed to talk about the first month and it kind of like went on into other stuff. But the first month is hard, but it's good. And I definitely like within those first few weeks, of it just being hard, me being tired. I had moments where I was like, oh my God, what have you done, Victoria? Like, you're not cut out to be a mom. How do people have kids? How do people have multiple kids? It was just hard and it, I just didn't know how people did it. So that's my video, video talking about kind of what the first month was like and things I learned in the first month and kind of a little bit after because he's two months old now. So, and he's waking up again. So I'm gonna go get him and take care of him. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more of me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.